Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video and I'm all excited because of the context. Now context is one of my favorite topic in the entire JavaScript. The moment I really understood what the context is, I was able to debug my code so much easier. And once you are good in debugging, then the completion rate of your project, the speed of it increases like exponentially. Context will help you to understand why the weirdness of JavaScript is going on and this is the most important topic that you should focus a lot. So video might get a little bit longer, but this is most important one. So let's first understand what is the context. In the previous video, we saw that there are some of the global context and variety in the context that is available to us. We didn't talk about what variety is available and how it actually works. This video is gonna talk about how these contexts actually work. So let's talk about it. Now, whenever I say that there is a context available to us. Just remember, there are two types of major context available to us. One is the global and one that is executing right now. So giving you another example of it, for example, right now, as soon as I have this code, there is a global context uh, already kicking in. So if I just say uh, var and I say uh, num is equals to one, there is already a global context running at this moment collecting information about my code. Now, as soon as I write a function, let's just say I simply say, say me, and there is a simple function, and it just say console.log, and it literally says, uh, say, say me. Now, there is another context that kicks in right now. Not right now. Right now, the global context is kicking. As soon as I call this method, say me, another context which is known as execution context kicks in. The whole idea behind the global context is to just majorly collect the information. But as soon as you want to run some code like console.log which has just one line of execution context, it kicks in and it goes away. But when you call a function here, that means an entire function needs to execute. So an execution context will come which will be responsible for running this function. Coming back onto the point. so. We have this global context which is collecting information for everything and about everything. We saw that in majority of the cases, it's the window object which is available. Window object is tied majorly with the browser. Just keep that in mind. It's going to help you to understand things later on for the local storage. But we also saw that there are some global execution context that keeps on coming and keeps on stacking on over one or the other. And these execution contexts are not only with the functions, they happens with every line of code that you want to execute. If that execution is of just one line, they will come and they'll go away. If the execution is of an entire function, the entire big execution context will come. Once the execution is being done, then it will go away. So assume you're calling function one here at the bottom, then function two, and then some just console log. So first, as soon as these job of these context, execution context is gone, they just go away. Consider this as like a memory stack here. So as soon as the memory is needed, it keeps on stacking of each other and then they go away. If you're coming up from other language background like C++ or something, and especially my courses, we have talked a whole lot about the stack and heap memories there, but not to get you confused on that part, just remember there is a global context and there is an execution context, okay. Now this execution context is the point where a lot of people get a whole lot of confused because it's not just about executing the one line. It brings us a couple of more features. In fact, four or five new things to us. We're not worried about all those four and five things, but rather three major things. The first is variable object. The second is scope or scope chain. And third is this keyword. Now this keyword is actually very special to JavaScript only and it's majorly not found in other languages, but the working is exactly same as in JavaScript and as in other language. Okay, now first and foremost, let's not talk about all of them here. We will understand all of them in the code part because that's the easier way to understand them. Just remember that there are two rules. Whenever there is an execution context, there are two rules that you have to follow. The first rule is function declaration are scanned and made available. So we saw that in the previous video as well that we were able to call the functions first and then we were having the definition of the function that what you're gonna do. This was all possible because of the global context because it scans the entire code and whenever there is a function, it takes it at some place and make it available for the entire code. And that is the reason 
why you were able to access that method here. Rule number two, and this is a whole lot of people just forget about it. Variable declarations are also scanned and made undefined. And this is the most important rule. What it says is you're going to be declaring a whole lot of variable, but it's not really necessary that you're going to be using those variable at the same time. For example, you just say var name and that's it, put a semicolon. And you want to fill that value later on. Probably name is equals to Hitesh. That is going to come up later on, exactly similar to method. And this will get much more clear as we are going to write the code. Just remember the two lines here that functions are declared or function declaration are scanned and are made available to whoever wants to have an access. But variable declaration are also scanned but variable are made undefined. Okay, just keep that in mind and we're gonna talk about them. Now we're gonna talk about these variable objects, scope chain and this later on as well. Of course, we are here for that, but let's see and understand them through the code perspective. Okay, so I think you got this one, uh, no big deal. Let's write some fun code so that we can enjoy that. So first and foremost, let's go ahead and create a method which is gonna be a tipper that calculates a tip here. So for example, you just pass it on A here and you go ahead and just uh, kind of calculate the tip. We're not going to do much of the calculation. So I'm going to declare a simple bill and that bill is going to be whatever the bill you have passed me on. So let's just say this is the A that you have passed me on. And then we're going to be doing a console log here. So whatever the bill you give to me, I'm going to just add five to it. Okay, so far very easy code here. Let's go ahead and try to run this. So when I run the tipper with, let's just say I pass on a $5 bill and I try to run this code, it gives me, hey, I'm gonna add five to it, a very generous and it gives a $10. But there's a small problem. Now that has nothing to do with what we are studying here about hosting or the execution context, but just trying to give you more of how the real world code actually looks like. Let's just say somebody pass on this five and save this and try to run this method. Then we see 55, which is really, really uh, not so friendly tip that you are giving for a $5 bill, you are giving a $55 amount. Not really good. Now there are a variety of ways how we can do this. One of the easy way is instead of parsing the A directly, we are gonna simply say that I want to have a parse int. We have a parse float as well, but I'm gonna use parse int right now. And I'm gonna say that whatever the value comes in first is gonna go uh, inside it and parse int is gonna convert the string into actual usable numbers. So string five is gonna be converted into five and now I will have the same result that I should be having. Now surely if you pass on something like A, this is not a well handled code, I would agree on that part because it gives me a not a number error which it shouldn't be giving, it should be rather giving me a better message. But anyways, it's held, it's holding up nicely and we are having a good code here. Okay, we have discussed a whole lot on this. Let's just say we are giving a $80 bill, maybe that's expensive and it's, it's coming up nicely. So this is the part. Now what we saw that when we do and talk about these context, if I move this tipper or this uh, call of the function at the very top, I will be able to run this code without any problem because my global execution context scans my entire code and make functions available to me if they are declared. If they are not declared, let's just say we comment that out, now it's gonna say, I don't know what that is because it, it was never defined anywhere in my code. Okay, you get the point, that's the easy part. Okay, now let's go ahead and talk about another type of functions uh, which you might have seen and we have discussed about them a lot. We have also noticed that we can declare another function, which we are gonna call this one as big tipper. The tip is gonna be a bit bigger this time. Let's just say it also takes A and we run that. We're gonna use the exact same code because we know that runs, but instead of having a tip of five, we're gonna say we are very generous and we're gonna have a tip of $15 this time. How do we call this one? We simply go ahead and say big tipper and with a value of, let's just say, uh, somebody is eating a lot of $200, we run that. Let's see how this time the code runs. Okay, $215, no problem, no problem at all. So, now let's go ahead and say that you move at the very top before the declaration of this function. Notice very carefully, things are gonna get interesting in a second. Runs fine, but we have also seen that what we can do is we can say var big 
tipper that is equals to a function and we can remove this from here. This is also a valid code, we have seen this. But now notice what happens, very, very interesting thing. There we go, big tipper is not a function. So what happened? I was able to run this and you told us in the earlier, earlier videos that this is exactly same as this. But there's a big, big difference here. Here, we are saying this is a function. Here, this is a variable. If you remember my two tips here, that functions declared are scanned and are made available, but whenever you declare a variable, then they are scanned and are made undefined. So this variable that you're trying to use is right now undefined. The global context doesn't know about it. Yes, they are functions, but they are treated as just like ordinary variable. And that is why this code hoisting thing actually comes up. This whole uh, mumbo jumbo thing, which is confusing a whole lot of people, this exactly is the hoisting. That keep those two things or two notes always in mind. If you're declaring the variable, then this syntax should always come first and your code, which you are trying to have it here, this should come at the end. But if you're declaring pure functions, not these uh, variable-ish function, then things are actually a bit different. So let's go ahead and run this one. Okay, now you got to know the difference between what is exactly the difference between having a function just like this and calling a variable functions like this and then having equals function and stuff like that. This is a big part of having a simple code hoisting. Not only that, we're gonna talk a little bit more. I know this is too much, but it's interesting. Yeah, you'll give me on that, that it is interesting. Okay, let's just say, and we want to talk a little bit more on the second line because this is the most confusing part. Variable declaration are scanned and made undefined. We need to prove this point very solidly so that you never ever get confused on that. So, let's just say I'm having a war and I'm saying name, and my name is, let's just say, is Hitesh. Okay, nice and easy. We are gonna do a console log of name. Save that, no problem, we have seen this code hundreds of time and it prints my name, okay. Now the code hoisting says that what if I try to console log it first and then try to declare it? Remember, according to the global context, when you try to use it, global context knows it, that you have a name being declared later on. All you're trying to do right now is trying to access it first. In that case, remember the line again that it is made as undefined. And undefined is what I say to you here. This is undefined. Undefined is completely, completely different from an error. The global context is smart and is collecting all the value. The proof of this is if I just comment this out, that means this variable is not available and I'm trying to use it. When I try to run this, this gives me an error that name was never available. But in the previous case, the global context knows this, that yes, variable is available. It's just the matter of fact that right now it is undefined because I've collected the information and you're trying to use it first. So this is very interesting thing and you should always, always should know about it. So this is the basics of having other things. Okay, should I continue this? Yeah, I really want to. I want to declare, i show you a couple of more things here as well with the name actually. Let's just say, let's create a very teeny tiny more. So let's just say I'm having a function and it just says, say name, okay? And it just does nothing. We come in here and we say var name and name is gonna be equal to Mr. H. And then I just simply go ahead and do a console log of name. Okay, fine and easy. I come back here and I do a console log of name here. Okay, very interesting. And to make it be even more interesting, I'm gonna go ahead and move it up at the top. So, now this is gonna give us a whole lot of clarity in what is exactly happening here. First and foremost, I'm trying to use a name, and this name is declared later on. So according to the rule that we have learned, that means name is gonna be undefined here at this moment, line number 15. And here at line number 23, now since the name is available, the last one, we are gonna get my name, Hitesh. But what is going to happen inside here? Now, if you remember the diagram, which a couple of videos I told you ago, there we go, this, this is the one. Remember, I told you the execution stack, which is at the top, is the only thing which my program knows about. So if there are multiple name being defined in these execution context, it cannot actually dig below it and try to find that variable. 
Here in the first execution context, if I say, hey, name is Hitesh, and in the second one, if I say name is Mr. H, it doesn't know about Mr. H. It can only execute inside its entire context. Giving you the fact again, it will get clear up, don't you worry. So first thing, we are having undefined here, then the name get a definition. And here we are 100% sure the name will come up Hitesh. But this is on its own context. So when I say this say name, now a new context is being loaded at the top of global context. Let's run this one. This one is fun. So, so 85, 20, 215 is all great. First we get undefined. This is coming up from line number 15. Then we call up this function. That means another execution context got loaded up. Sorry, I bumped my mic. So another execution context got loaded up. And this execution context cannot drill down below it. So it says, I don't know whatever the name for you might be. For me, the name is Mr. H. So Mr. H comes here. And then this context, once this has executed the things at line number 23, it just poof is gone. It says, I don't know what you're talking about, Mr. H. I just know one thing about the name that it is defined in the global context, and that is Hitesh. So Hitesh is available here. There we go. Okay, so quite a fun. I know this is a long video. I really don't like long videos, but this was necessary here. And that's why sometimes videos get longer. And I'm pretty sure you have enjoyed this one. You have understood a whole lot behind the scenes. And that is why you're going to hit that subscribe button. I'm confident about it. Let's go ahead and catch up in the next video.